There have been a number of amazing advances in just the few short months since our Plasma Cosmology movie last year. These have come at various levels of scale and have furthered our understanding of the dynamics of the universe, the shape of the cosmos. The problems for dark matter have continued at the galactic scale, perhaps nowhere more than with the satellite galaxies. The dominance of magnetic fields and plasma processes over chaos and gravitational processes in astrophysics has pushed forward as well. We've seen a major blow to string theory, the theory of everything. When Chandra found no axions, they matched the precise level of success of everyone else who's ever searched for dark matter. But perhaps nothing is going to be more disruptive to the thinking than the fact that expansion is not homogeneous as they look across the heavens. Dark purple areas are not expanding as quickly, while the yellow areas appear to be expanding much more quickly. Almost like on the purple line, something is holding it all in, and on the yellow line, something has made the material appear to be accelerating outward in a repulsion-like excess. Well, there's this thing out there in space called the Great Attractor, almost like a vacuum sucking things up harder than everywhere else in space. It is sitting in a line of material flowing into another Great Attractive region, the Shapley Attractor, sitting opposite a repulsive region known as the Dipole Repeller. Galaxies are flying away from the repeller like solar wind away from the sun, forming a billion light year structure from end to end, and with our local group being in the middle of the structure and it indeed being oriented with our galactic tilt in mind, such that the bottom of the screen would be southward in the galaxy, making the top part of the screen what would be seen north of the galactic disk. Now with that perspective in mind, both the dipole repeller and the Shapley attractor would appear in the northern part of the sky with the Great Attractor being just about on the galactic level there in the middle, actually sitting slightly south of the galactic disk. And folks, I'm sure a lot of you were putting this together as I was saying it. The Great Attractor is just below the galactic plane in the core region where expansion is dampened, like something was holding it in. The Shapley Attractor is behind the Attractor just to the north, and its cohesive signature is lessened at that distance. And of course, the Dipole Repeller sits north of the galactic plane on the other side, where there is, coincidentally, an excess repulsion in the expansion data. But indeed, the repeller is not the core of the yellow and we wouldn't expect it to be. Our galaxy is in the line of velocity from the repeller to the great attractor, and so while greater expansion should appear on the sides of the repeller, the actual region of the repeller itself would appear to be pushing things through the center line and may even present a seemingly restrictive force on the expansion, even if only in our line of sight. But of course, that's the only one we have. So, the yellow bits are the side of the dipole repeller, and the restricted expansion seen down the vertical line, sort of purple from that, is due to the velocity flow being in our direction, ergo, less observed expansion. With the great attractor, by contrast, the strongest restriction on expansion would indeed be right on the money, right where we did see the attractor. But this easy explanation for the expansion discrepancies would provide more questions than answers. The entire dipole structure is a billion light years across, containing our local group at nearly the center. The local sheet is our field of nearby groups of galaxies that forms the local galactic supercluster. And now if we take the position that the dipole repeller is responsible for the expansion discrepancies nearby, that means we aren't seeing much about the rest of the universe. One billion light years is one hash mark on the top side of the center horizontal line here. This expansion thing is supposed to capture dynamics to the edge of observation. So what does expansion really look like? Are there other repellers all over in various orientations? Is there a line of attractors and repellers in some pattern? One thing is for sure. It doesn't look like the cosmic microwave background maps, and that holds true no matter how you play with the images to look for coherent structure. In theory, the microwave shouldn't be able to show any further than the expansion map. So what are we looking at here? It would certainly strain credulity to imagine that at the most distant regions of the cosmos, the expansion discrepancy matches perfectly with what you'd expect based on the structures within just the closest 1 billion light years. It calls into question the edge of the universe. Maybe it doesn't have one. It calls into question its theoretical beginning. Maybe it didn't have one, or maybe our attractor dipole repeller setup was just one in a long, long line trillions of years old. What if the repeller attractor system is a toroidal feature most of all? 
What if there are actually wormholes and the attractive matter pops out the other side at the repeller? What if they represent the north and south asymmetric ejecta of a super supernova that they're mistaking for the Big Bang long ago? If all we see in the largest scale dynamics is truly a local effect, then it's more likely to have just been one of many across space and time, which would also explain the weird and often conflicting signals from deeper space observations from within different conditions. Now, at the end of the day, when we begin to question the expansion story, the universe all of a sudden may have no bounds. We can't be sure that time began with the Big Bang, and we cannot at all be sure about those physics-bending moments right afterwards. Maybe this is all a great coincidence, the correct signature on the expansion, the right spots above and below the galactic plane, the correct features specific to the repeller and attractors, respectively. Something tells me that's far too many coincidences to be reconciled. Be sure to check out the full Plasma Cosmology movie linked below this one, along with other follow-up episodes that explain why you should care about any of this. Whenever you're watching, I'll see you in the morning. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.